fans of a Horus Heresy, multi-part models, and more plasma than is safe to handle, thank you very much for joining me for a build and chat video. It's been a little while since we've done one of these, and today I thought I would share a little technique that I use around assembling uh, models such as these. And these are Mark V resin marines from Forge World's Horus Heresy range, and they are armed with plasma cannons. As you can see, these are the new plasma cannon weapons, the underarm slung variety. These are part of a very topical commission I'm currently working on for a Dark Angels force. So yes, fans of Legio 1, I'm sure you've detected the plasma link. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to just show a couple of little tips and tricks about putting these models together, which if you're thinking of buying some, then hopefully it might help you because these can be a little bit trickier to build than say standard marines but hopefully with this it'll make life easier for you we're going to build one of these i'm going to build this one on the end I do hope you like how they've been laid out a deconstructed space marine squad like a posh dessert at a michelin starred restaurant let's talk about tools because we only need a few today all the cleanup work is done so what we're going to be needing though is drilling tools. So we've got a pin vise and some fine piano wire. The piano wire is about, it's either 0.25 or 0.3 millimeters thick with a corresponding diameter needle file. I'm going to be using these for pinning the arms and the wrists onto the weapon or one of the wrists. Should we need it, we've also got a sharp scalpel. And I think that is probably everything we need. I've already tested the pose, so we're just gonna be focusing on the build. As well as doing that, I thought I'd have a chat about a couple of things that are happening at the moment. So, well, Book Nine was released. That is a big deal for us Heresy fans. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the new podcast that I put an episode up on the channel recently, the Reiterators Lawcast. I thought I'd give you a bit more background to that and have a quick chat around that as well. And what else shall I talk about? We'll see. We'll see if a third thing pops into my mind. Okay, right, so to the task. So these resin space marines from Forge World are very much the classical style. Legs, piece of tack, that's another tool. Torso, head. Separate arms, two pauldrons, a power pack, the plasma cannon, and also the thing that really kind of makes these, a little, this is probably the trickiest part of assembling these, the power feed. And the power feed is going to connect to the plasma cannon and then link up to the backpack. So those are the parts we're dealing with. So just a quick, let's just tack it up what we're going to do and I'll explain what's going to come from that. Blue tack or equivalent is a very handy modeling tool. Ever so cheap, ever so simple, ever so effective. I use it all the time. So there you go, that's an idea you know, of how you might tack the marine together. Of course, with these guys, you have this range of motion that's possible. Uh, and this is, you know, a lot of what made the Space Marine range so successful is they are so versatile. Right. We then got the two arms. Now, looking at the arms, we've got two identification pips. And because this kit is a set of five models, the sculptor put these pips in so you can match the arms up. But as you've probably noticed, there's no attachment pegs. So you're going to need to do something about that. You could super glue them straight on, but experience tells me that can be a little fragile. It's also difficult to assemble. So what we're going to do is going to put two short pins into these, and then we're going to drill the corresponding holes into the torso. So we're going to do that, the other thing we're going to do is we've got the wrist joint to consider here. That's going to need a pin as well. I think this one's very important to pin. 
this arm, his left arm, doesn't need a wrist pin because the hand is attached. So we're going to do that. That's kind of like the first half of this demonstration. The second half is around the technique I use for positioning this cable, because of course this is a straight cable and it attaches there on the plasma cannon. And then this other end goes there on the backpack. So you can see that is not going to, you can't bend it enough. The trick is you heat this up through some means. I use hot water. Now it's three parts, that seems quite intimidating. But what you do is you stick these bits together like that and then you heat it up and you do it as one and it makes a whole process far, far simpler. Anyway, let's do the pinning first. Which I forgot, which is our good old friend, the spike, the brattle spike. So when doing these, you generally, not always, but I typically aim to put the drill hole central in the arm mounting point. And I'm just going to drill that out. Okay, so uh, depth on this, I'll probably go to, I don't know, maybe four millimeters, three, four millimeters. That should do the trick. It doesn't have to be extremely deep to work. I was going to super glue this and a short pin combined with a super glue is going to give a very strong join. Right, book nine is out. Book nine is out. After much anticipation and waiting, it's finally out. And Dark Angel's fans around the world are probably doing something a little bit Python-esque and are saying, and there was much rejoicing, Sir Robin style. So yeah, I got the book. I've read a little bit of it. Most of the stuff I've read so far has been around the Dark Angel's army list which is absolutely fascinating. And it also features one of the coolest, craziest Walker robot units in the game so far yet. The actual Silica Animus, the abominable intelligence of the Extinctio class battle automata. I think I got the name right there. But yeah, the actually get to use AI robots. Super heretical, but super cool. Fascinating looking armor, so in terms of how it's structured and the concept that sits behind it, in that it's this, it's kind of like Legio 1 was the experimental legion. And it was used to test out all forms of warfare that the Astartes would practice. And other legions developed it from there. But yeah, so they've got a very unique layout. And I'm rather tempted to put together a little old force. Well, I'm going to see if I do miniatures for the Extinctio class battle automata. If I do a model for that, I'll definitely do it a little Dark Angels detachment, so I think it'd be great. Right, I think we're here with the drilling. So you've got about that depth, that's probably about four millimeters. And then the other side, about the same. So that's plenty. Let's now do the corresponding bits on the arms. This is where it's a little bit trickier, so you've got to judge the center point and it's not quite so clear. I generally sort of use this inner shoulder pad as a frame of reference. If it's not quite central, we can widen the hole a little to sort that out. 
but generally speaking this tends to work quite well first time so yeah book nine looks really fascinating so far it's the first time we've had such a focused book in a way. I suppose book four was kind of similar. Uh, but book nine is entirely about the Dark Angels and the Night Lords. Very much looking at the Thramas Crusade, which occupied a great deal of these two legions' time during the Horus Heresy. In particular, the Dark Angels, obviously the Night Lords, played a pivotal role in the Isfan Five Massacre, Drop Site Massacre. There you go. I've gone through a bit there. That won't matter because that's covered. Okay, I drilled a little bit deep. That's fine. I was talking a bit too much about Night Lords. Let's do this other arm now. Should do. There's always a lot to read with a black book, a lot to digest. I mean, I'm, I'm, I was very excited for it to come out, so I'm a big fan of the heresy. And there's loads of content in it. Not as much as previous black books, which is yeah, a little bit less, but I wouldn't pass judgment on that until I've actually read it because one of my favorite black books of the whole series is actually book five, Tempest, which is the shortest of the preceding seven, uh, eight books even. So it's not just the length of the book, it's the quality therein. But yeah, the Dark Angels army looks absolutely fascinating. Really, really interesting. Almost, in a way, it's like Black Shields and Shattered Legions all over again. Probably a bit more like Black Shields and how versatile its structure is and how it allows you to craft specialized armies. So I think we are, where did my piece of wire go? Yeah, there we go. I've hidden it next to the knife. That's cool. We'll drill the holes now for the wrist. And then once that's done, we can stick everything, or we can do all the wire sticking in one go. So we're going to need a plasma cannon. Now I need to think, where's the best place to put the pin? Do I want it in the hand? Hmm, or that. So it's a little bit low, I should have done my guide hole. Yes. A little bit low my first pass. I need to extend the drill out a little. Oh gosh, that's tight. I always get told off around my household for tightening lids too much. Even in my university days, one of my housemates, who's a big six foot six guy, used to complain at me for how tight I put the lids on things. Quite a quite an important moment in the heresy. First time we've had a book in over a year. Although it wouldn't have been as long as that had it not been for the pandemic. The pandemic definitely delayed its release. So like most things this year, we've all had to um, just recalibrate our expectations accordingly. So 
So if I do, it needs to be about central. Yeah. These definitely take a bit more work, I think, than um, plastic marines in terms of the building. You see, the flip side is I think the cleanup's a lot easier on resin miniatures. Plastic ones are just so laborious. Whereas in models, it depends on how it's cast. Sometimes you can have a fair amount of work to do. Others, it can be virtually none. Plastic miniatures, there is always quite a lot to do, regardless, you know, even when it's perfectly cast, apart from the odd kit. Things like, let's say, the Legio Custodes original kit. The, certainly the ones I built, the mold lines on those are very, very well controlled. I, you know, I'm still impressed with that to this day. But most of the time, with a plastic model, there is a set, consistent amount of cleanup that, were, that needs to be done because the mold line runs around everything. You don't get that with resin models. And I also think resin is a more forgiving medium to clean up than plastic. Plastic is quite unforgiving, actually. So it's less fun. So a lot of people, um, so I don't know a lot of people, but I certainly have heard many people say that they don't like resin, but uh, for me, it's the other way around. My preference over the plastic. Right, so, so we've got everything drilled now. So we can put some pins in. Let's start with the shoulders. So I put my pins into the arms. So we will do that. I've also got a layer accelerant to hand in case I just need to knock off the, or kickstart, should I say, not knock off, but kickstart the reaction. One final tool, a set of hardened wire cutters, which we're going to need to deal with the piano wire. If you try to cut piano wire with unhardened cutters, you will start to damage the blades. I think I'm gonna put the pin into the wrist on this. I'll start with this one. Right, and also let me move on to the next thing I'd like to talk about, which is the Reiterator's Lawcast. So this is a, it's like a podcast where a group of us are going to get together and talk about the heresy from a perspective of its stories. It was the idea of Robin, who um, he, he just kind of came up with the idea and tagged a few of us over on Twitter and it developed from there. Is that done? So I put the first episode up, where, and I, if you've not already seen it, I'll leave a link in the description. If you're interested in discussion around the stories, please do check that out. I hope you like it. One of the things we've done is we've got some presenters, or let's say panelists, from a variety of, uh, well, just different people, really. So as well as me, we had Faton from Dantioch, the YouTuber who likes to talk about his heresy armor, a massive Iron Warriors and White Scars fan. We had uh, Jesse and Caro on from the Remembrances Retreat, a very well-known heresy podcast. They're based out in the States. Dantioch's based in Germany. Uh, Robin, like myself, is based in the UK. All being well, we are recording a second episode today. We've got some uh, some different people on. So yeah, I hope you like that. Our aim is to talk about the lore of the heresy and the stories. And we're starting with Horus Rising, which is a seminal book for the 40k universe, and not just the heresy. Horus Rising tells the reader so much about the whole of the 40k universe and its origins. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to pick up on the themes of the stories. Talk perhaps a little bit about the authors, what we saw in the characterizations and the themes that are explored. And we're trying to do it from a perspective of people who haven't um, had any engagement with the heresy in the past, or indeed the wider 40K, and I suppose by extension Warhammer. Warhammer in general. 
So that's the that's kind of like the concept. Will it work? I don't know. We will uh, we will try and we will see what happens. But one of the things we're really wanting to do, we all want to, I guess, through sharing our interest and excitement for the novels, is to encourage our viewers, you guys and girls, to do the same as we've done and go and read or listen to those books. So you can hear the story firsthand as the author wrote it. And firstly, you know, enjoy the story because they are uh, very engaging tales. And secondly, form your own opinions as to what the author is trying to convey. Because YouTube is full of channels who lead conclusion first, let's say, on the law. And present kind of like their own interpretations as fact. And if you only watch a channel that does that, you might miss, depending on who runs a channel, you could easily be, you could easily miss themes in the story or if the person is presenting their own opinions of fact and not qualifying that approach, you could completely miss or even have your understanding of that story distorted by their particular take. So that's what we're looking to address. So there we go. And talking of addressing things, this guy now has a couple of arms that are tacked, uh, well, pinned and ready to be stuck on. I think I'm more or less happy with the positions there. That looks pretty good to me. Not so sure about this left arm. We might just bring a pauldron in to see how it looks. So it's a little bit, it's perhaps a little bit far up, but it's not. You can get away with uh, a bit of, you know, a little bit of wiggle here and there with these models. And that's part of their charm. Ah, uh, that's fine. I don't think I've got any worries there. Mark V's, gosh, what an awesome armor mark. I'm gonna be doing some more Mark V once I get my word bearers project out of the way. I have ideas for Mark V's. So we've set up the pins there. Now we're going to do the backpack. So the first step in doing the backpack is to stick the power cable on. Now with these power cables, check the Forge World website for their studio assembled model to see how to assemble them. Because you've got a set of cables there and another set of cables there. There's not a lot of difference. Now I've checked this and I now know that it goes this way around. And the reason for this is we've got this little cable here that connects to this one. And then that, whoops, just lost focus there. And goes onto the backpack. So yes, if you're not sure about how to attach these power cables check for Jaws website, it will help you. Okay, we'll stick a bit of adhesive. <laughs> stick a bit of adhesive, punny. We shall apply a bit of adhesive. There we go. These are nice ones. These are once they're stuck, they're plenty strong. You don't need to pin these. Well, I certainly haven't in my experience. And then I'm going to rinse repeat on the power pack. Which reminds me I need to brush up on Horus Rising part two before this afternoon. 
talking about murder. Second act of Horus Rising. So now what we've got is we've got the weapon and its power cable and the power pack all as one unit. What we can then do is we can now stick the arms in place, heat this up, and as one action, get the location right on this cable. It's as easy as that. So, I think I'm now ready to explore this pose a bit more. I mean, I picked this because this is a fairly easy, straightforward pose. It's kind of like the alert uh, firing stance marine pose, I call it. Something like that. I actually have the gun raised a bit. The other thing we can do once this is stuck together is we can just use some heat to close up the left hand around the upper handle of the plasma cannon. That always looks good. It's another nice little feature you, or characteristic of resin models. So I'm going to stick the wrist next. Oops, he escaped out of camera there. So just going back to the Reiterators podcast, if you're someone who knows the heresy well, in terms of the stories, and you might be interested in coming on as a panelist, then by all means, please do get in touch either leave a comment here or best of all tap me up on twitter that's where the most immediate way to get hold of me or even drop me an email yeah that might be uh as i say if you are interested in joining in please do it's not about making we're not making money in any way well i certainly aren't so i don't monetize my channel it's just about the love of the lore and the hobby right okay i'm now going to go get some hot water we're going to do this power cable. Got a nice little souvenir mug there. Picked up at the Tank Museum in Bovington. It's a Tiger 131 mug. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to immerse this into the hot water, uh, make it nice and soft, and then bend it into position. So here goes. Yeah, it probably I know, it may only take about 10 seconds because that is now nice and flexible and I have to work quite quickly. There you go. Simple as that. And now I just need to hold it in position while the resin cools and locks that position into its structure. 
and there you go. Now, look how easy that was to do. You, you need to be careful, obviously, with the hot water, but very straightforward. And by sticking the power cable onto the weapon and the backpack, we've taken a whole load of grief out of putting this together, I believe. Also, using the pins helps as well. So this guy is pretty much done now. Yeah, awesome models. Mark V's just look so cool. Yeah. The Heresy needs more Mark V armies, I think. At this rate, I'm going to be buying an army of Mark V's. I'll get Mark V attraction syndrome. You can still easily take it apart. But now, of course, this is all one unit. But there's enough flexibility in the parts and the pin isn't so long as to prevent me doing that. So we'll take that out there. I don't find it necessary to pin the waists. I think they're strong enough. But, you know. That's, you know, very much user preference. It's certainly not going to harm your model if you choose to pin the waist to that way. Now, because we've only just, I wouldn't normally be sticking because I'll be building a batch of these, I won't normally be sticking quite so soon after the hot water, so I just need to dry off any water as to not to interfere with the glue, because water will, it'll kick off a super glue reaction quicker, and it will also cause the super glue to swell up to a degree, so you won't get as good a fit. I mean, some people actually use water as an accelerant on superglue, and it is quite a legit approach. But I think for fine modeling, I would use either just time or an actual accelerant product. So yeah, I'm just gonna go with him shooting and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna incline his helmet forward. So it looks like he's leaning into the shot, really focused on where he's aiming. And that's a really, really good thing about these marine models. You can just get so much life into them. They really are exceptional for it. Now I'm going to put the glue on kind of like in one go. You don't necessarily have to do this. You could, well, actually, no, I'm going to, I'll, I'll be a bit slower. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, Put the glue on this arm. The glue on this arm. We'll leave the hand for the moment and we'll leave the backpack. And we'll come back and do those once. We've got the uh, arms done. So we'll need to work reasonably quickly here. The super glue timer is ticking. Push those arms together. That'll stick nice and easy. 
the use of the pins is helping us out greatly here. Now all we need to do is run a bit of glue into the backpack and that will just snap on Robert's your father's brother. So just run some glue onto this scalpel tip. Now just push that into position and hold. That sticks. And get some glue there. Super glue can be quite fickle as to how quickly it will stick, stick slick sometimes, no stick. Let's see, I'm gonna put a bit more glue just onto there. That should do nicely. You can use this trick with any of the power cabled weapons that these resin marines have and it equally works if you're going to put these resin weapons onto plastic Mark III, Mark IV or indeed other kit bash models you're going to work with. There we go. So I've got, I think, a really nice pose here. We've used this strong stance the Marine's aiming his weapon. The cable's nicely positioned. It all looks nice and natural. And then to finish, I'm gonna put his face, his helmet inclined into the shot like that, or in looking forward as to the direction of his target. Okay. Yeah. Mark V, it's the sort of armor, it just looks like you don't want to mess with this Marine. Very visually brutal. Now it comes with a studded and a standard shoulder pad. We're going to go with the normal approach of studs on the, hmm, let me think. Studs go on the left pauldron, don't they? Yes. I should know that as someone who made Mark VI Beaky Marines. Sometimes with these pulsions, you have to wiggle them around a bit to find the contact points. So yeah, don't be afraid to uh, give that a good go. Yeah, awesome. Last but not least, you might remember I said about closing up this hand. The way to do that is again to heat the resin up with the water and then we're just going to use this knife blade as a tool, wiping the glue off it first. Hopefully a Tiger 131 water is still hot enough. And we're just going to use that to close that hand up. It's very thin the resin so it won't need to be in long. A bit longer than that though. the swish it's probably cooled a bit there you go sorry about the camera there looks 
because it's a little bit all tight here with the shot, but there you go. That's what I wanted. So I've just closed the hand up on the handle. Again, that's another thing you can only easily do with resin miniatures. You can do a little bit of handwork with plastic models, but it is an absolute pain. And the results are eh, meh. You know, with plastic, you really need to be working with pre-built hands. I'm going to put a dab of adhesive on, but I'm not going to do that yet because it needs some opportunity to dry. So apart from that, the only thing to remain would be to mount the miniature on the base. But there you go. I think that's probably the whole of this demonstration complete as to how to assemble a Marine with the Horus Heresy style heavy weapons. So just to recap, pin the arms, pin the wrist. Pins go in the wrist, the upper arms. Attach any power cables to both the weapon and the backpack first. Work out your pose with your arms, then heat the weapon up and position the backpack. Attach your details and then use some heat just to close the resin hand onto the weapon. Obviously, if you're doing plastic marines, you're able to do that, so you'd have to use a different technique there. There you go. A member of Legio 1, the Dark Angels, armed with a heavy plasma cannon, wearing Mark V heresy plate. What an awesome model. These are still in production, so why, uh, yeah, so you can buy these and do these now. Right, well, I think that's everything. I hope you have enjoyed this demonstration, and I hope you find it useful as well. As always, please share your thoughts and observations in the comment section. I'll be very interested to hear. Also, remember to check that episode of the Reiterators Lawcast out. I will leave a link in the description. And keep your eyes peeled for future episodes of Reiterators. The podcast is also available to listen to on Spotify. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.